Editors at Europe's top-selling newspaper take great pride in being able to read their readers' hearts and sense their emotions. With the arrival of 1.1 million refugees in Germany in 2015, Bild Zeitung initiated a welcome campaign, mirroring the views of then-Chancellor Angela Merkel, who had opened the country's borders on her own initiative to Syrians escaping civil war in their original country. The call was answered by Germans. In sports halls, churches, and even their own houses, they set up camp beds for their rivals and waved balloons, draped bunting on lamp posts, and provided food pack. This makes the latest advertising campaign from Bild, the popular newspaper in Germany, all the more remarkable. It has issued a highly contentious 50-point manifesto teaching migrants how to behave as the nation confronts a national culture clash, with a front-page title, Germany, we have a problem. The document states, We are in the middle of a chaotic world. Since Hamas terrorist attack on Israel on October 7, we have seen a rise in hatred directed against Germany, our democracy, and our ideals. Many people in our nation are against our way of life. Those who take pleasure in killing defenseless bystanders. Those who ban women from wearing pants. Those who teach their children to hate others because they are infidels, non-believers, and those who listen to radical preachers because they desire a different society. Germany ought to refuse. Bild refers to its credo as a sort of house rules for all German citizens, but immigrants are the target audience by far. Furthermore, its importance cannot be emphasized. Bild has a significant influence on the attitude of the German people with its provocative images and attention-grabbing headlines. The publication sells one million print copies every day. Its website has 25 million monthly visitors, or nearly one-third of the adult population in the country, and it has 20 regional editions that cover every corner of the country. This week, an experienced commentator in Germany informed me that politicians use it as their preferred literary material. In a notable testimony, Mrs. Merkel's predecessor, Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, stated, To govern, I need Bild Daily, the Bild Sunday edition, and the TV. Additionally, Ursula von der Leyen, the chairwoman of the European Commission today, attended the powerful dinner parties hosted by Bild's editors at Bild's Berlin headquarters while serving as a senior minister in Mrs. Merkel's cabinet during the 2015 immigration crisis. Thus, a few weeks ago, when the paper's manifesto showed up on newsstands, people took note. For Germany and its increasingly tense relationship with mass migrants, the move represented a dramatic turning point. Three million illegal immigration and asylum seekers since the start of 2015 have had a significant negative impact on the economy. The Federal Employment Agency revealed this week that, despite Germany's economic crisis, six out of ten assistance beneficiaries are immigrants who are healthy and able to work. Many are women who have been in the nation for a long time, and many are between the ages of 16 and 25. Germany, the former industrial powerhouse of Europe, will have spent £30 billion on housing bills and various government giveaways in 2023 alone, ranging from unemployment benefits to integration workshops. Meanwhile, living standards are falling and green energy costs are skyrocketing. For several decades, Germany achieved economic prosperity by controlling the world market for high-end automobiles and specialized manufacturing. The average worker could afford a house, a decent automobile, and an annual family vacation in the sun because half of the economy was based on exports. Not anymore. A recent survey revealed that a large number of small and medium-sized enterprises intend to go overseas, and last week the iconic German automaker Volkswagen announced job layoffs, citing a decline in demand for electric cars as home energy costs continue to climb. Concerns regarding the condition of the nation's social structure can now be included in the mix as Germany deals with the aftermath of an extended period of almost unrestricted immigration. The new Germans are held responsible for escalating crime rates, a scourge of sexual assaults on women, particularly at festivals and swimming areas, and the growth of gangs that carry guns and knives. In certain cities they have established virtual no-go zones that even the police are reluctant to end. In addition to the animosity that permeates these neighborhoods, police claim they lack the manpower to respond to every incident that occurs there. 
there are concerns that Germany has become divided into two distinct societies. The first is an orderly society where people work and pay taxes, and the second is a society where people rarely have regular jobs and frequently choose to rely on benefits. According to a Harvard University survey, many migrants in Germany are still clinging to the strict, orthodox Islamic traditions of their home countries rather than assimilating into the liberal culture of their new country. Women are frequently the targets of domestic abuse or are subjugated by men. According to the article, some people never even learned how to hold a pencil. The warnings of the late foreign policy maestro Henry Kissinger, a Jew who left Nazism for the United States in 1938, should be added to this depressing perspective. Just a few weeks before he passed away on Wednesday at the age of 100 in October, Kissinger granted German media Die Welt what turned out to be his last interview. It was a grave mistake to let in so many people of a totally different culture, religion, and concepts because it creates a pressure group inside each country that does that, he added, expressing his disgust at German street celebrations for Hamas atrocities. In actuality, weeks after the first significant influx, Merkel's vision of a multicultural paradise in Germany started to fall apart. In 2015, 1,200 women were the target of a major sex attack by 2,000 men who were organized into gangs during New Year's Eve festivities in Cologne's stunning cathedral plaza. Police described it as a wholly new dimension of crime, alleging that young guys of Arab and North African descent were behind it, having painstakingly prepared their sex act. The rioters threw fireworks into the throng to confuse and terrify their female victims before they attacked. Merkel expressed her unease, calling the scenes abominable. Running a refugee center in Cologne, Franco Clemens subsequently remarked in an internet forum, it felt like the ground was being pulled from under our feet. A large number of individuals who had previously embraced the hospitable culture were now afraid. Many supporters of migrants were lost. These reservations have increased in frequency throughout the years. Security officers conducted anti-terror raids on 54 mosques around the nation earlier this month on the suspicion that some of them may have been harboring Middle East terrorist sympathizers who were inciting anti-Semitism among attendees. The left-leaning administration of Chancellor Olaf Scholz is also pushing a new bill through the Bundestag and increasing the deputation of offenders who were born outside of Germany and asylum seekers who do not have the right to be there. However, the leader of the nation's police union, Rainer Wendt, believes that this is all coming too little, too late. He has stated that roughly 50,000 people will be legally required to leave the country. However, deporting them to their countries of origin will take more than 80 years at projected removal rates, during which millions more people will have come to this country. Any child who can do simple arithmetic can see through the treat. The European Parliament member for the hard-right alternative for Germany, AFD, Maximilian Kra, expressed his alarm over the party's rapid rise in the polls. What happened in Germany in 2015 was air. We are unable to bring in and provide for every member of the Global South. If this route to hell keeps going, it will completely destroy the nation. The 46-year-old father of seven who was trained as a lawyer in the U.S. continues, Our party is second in popularity in all age groups under 60. First, we are in Germany's East. Young people who follow us on TikTok seem to like us. When migrants cross a border into Europe, their perspectives on life remain unchanged. They will persist in believing in horror if they do. Even in broad daylight, there are parts of Germany that lack safety. There are duplicates of African and Syrian. I'm hoping there's still time to make changes. That's also what Build wants, in a way. Its manifesto covers a wide range of delicate subjects, including the widespread hate of Jews, homophobia, maltreatment of women, and the epidemic of bad manners. Since the terrorist attacks on Israel by Hamas, the latter issue has gotten worse in Germany. Jews' homes have been painted with the Star of David, and a synagogue in Berlin has been set on fire. Israel's security is a matter of German national interest against the backdrop of the darkest chapter in our history, the Holocaust, states Bild's Manifesto. It is not negotiable to stand up for Jews. Everyone is welcome to peacefully express their beliefs here. 
Free expression does not involve hurling rocks at individuals, beating them up, threatening them, setting cars on fire, or applauding killings. Every permanent resident is required to learn German. The manifesto is even more direct when it comes to women's rights. In the swimming pool, women dress in bathing suits or bikinis. It's also acceptable for them to swim in the Baltic Sea while nude. Here, women who have extramarital affairs are not shunned, much less beaten or stoned. Being a virgin is not a requirement for mad. Children are not married off in Germany. A man is only allowed to have one wife. Like men, women make their own decisions about what to wear, who to vote for, who to befriend, who to love, and what career to pursue. The woman donning the skirt chooses how long or short it should be. We look each other in the face instead of hiding behind veils. The statement continues, a woman's refusal to a man is final and unwavering. Anything further would be considered rape or sexual harassment. Similar to whistling or yelling at women, catcalling is considered harassment. Bild also makes strong statements about love and sex. Women can love women, and men can love men. The issue is that anyone finds that objectionable. Kickback at the manifesto has not occurred, as there would inevitably be here from the pro-migrant, Twitter-obsessed, guardian-loving left. In complete contrast, its message is long overdue, according to several Germans I spoke with in Hamburg and Berlin as well as some Iranian migrants. Regarding matters of culture and religion, the manifesto is as resolute. Germany, cheers. Here, wine and beer are integral to our culture. Be mindful of it and refrain from drinking if you so choose. There are no unbelievers for us. We don't set flags of nations we disagree with on fire. In Germany, one is not in the right position if one cannot stand mockery of politicians, celebrities, gods, or prophets. Lastly, it discusses criminality and the rise in the number of recipients of public assistance. We don't use fireworks unless it's authorized. Cutlery should be kept in the kitchen, not in our pockets. Since taxes are the cornerstone of the state, we pay them. We expect everyone who is able to do so to look for work and support themselves. Social services assist those who are unable to work yet are in need of money, not those who choose not to work. This year, at least 250,000 refugees have entered Germany. There will be those who genuinely want asylum, but many won't. Berlin worries that militants from Hamas are infiltrating the immigrants in an attempt to attack Europe as they are fleeing Palestine. At four German borders, police inspections have been reinstated, but the flow continues. The tension in the air is rising. Iranian whistleblower Qasem Mousavi, who fled Islamic oppression 30 years ago and is now based in Berlin, has long alerted the German authorities to the spread of hostility towards Jews, Christians, women, and the West. One evening this week, I was heading outside when he dragged me back into a Berlin coffee cafe. He warned me, be very careful, this is a dangerous place for an outsider. Following our two hours of conversation in Kreuzberg, the gritty, ethnic neighborhood dubbed Little Arabia. When I leave the house, I watch my back. Golitzer Park, a lovely green location in the region, is popular with both locals and visitors during the day, but at night, drug traffickers take over. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that the park had almost 6,000 criminal offenses recorded in 2021. Following our parting, Musavi summoned the Berlin security police to his nearby first-floor apartment. The stranger, or strangers, had broken into his apartment building, which had many units, as he laid in bed. Somehow they'd managed to get his apartment number and spent several minutes trying to pry open the door by shaking the doorknob. The following day, a visibly alarmed Musavi informed me it was a threat to Silesi. I've informed the ministers about the adversaries in this area who seek to destroy Germany. Next, he displayed to me images from his cell phone of some of the preachers from the targeted mosques who he believes are inciting support for terror organizations in Iran and Palestine. He might be correct. Regardless of the facts, the Build Manifesto has expressed what has remained silent for a long time. It's a message that many common Germans believe is crucial to convey in these extremely uncertain times, since they feel that their previous generosity has been turned back on it.